Welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation as usual as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. Don't you think about everyone and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I am so thrilled that you are able to be with us today. We're going to be talking about the brain flex system. But before I introduce you to our guest, I first of all, just want to welcome you to the show. Some of you might be new and might not know anything about us. Basically, I started the show because my mom lived with dementia for 30 years. And so Alzheimer Speaks is about raising everyone's voice all around the world because we don't think that we can make sustainable change if we're not talking. And if you liked our opening music, it's called Clarion Call by the Mark Arneson Band. And they would love it if you um, if you like the song, go ahead and download it on any of your favorite music platforms. We have also just updated our main website, alzheimerspeaks.com. And it's really super easy, easy to maneuver. Uh, we have one whole page that just has graphics of all of our free resources. You just have to click on each graphic and it will bring you to the specifics there. So please check that out. You will find Dementia Map on there as well, which I'm a co-founder of. And Dementia Map offers 150 different categories that you can search and you don't have to sign in. We're not asking for any of your information. We just wanna connect people around the world to services, products, and tools. So again, go to alzheimerspeaks.com. Uh, we also offer um, keynotes and trainings and different types of events, as well as assistance with branding on our uh, variety of educational models. Under our public events, you'll also see a couple of uh, support groups that I do. One is the Caregiver Connect program. That is the last Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m. And that is in person here in Shoreview, Minnesota, and also offers respite for those diagnosed. And then there is Arthur's Memory Cafe, which is virtual. That runs from 1 to roughly 2.30 p.m. on the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. If you're interested in either of those, just reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. We are going to hear from the Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner about the foot bar walker, and then we will be right back with our guest. I love the foot bar walker and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest, there are some clients who, despite our best rehab efforts, just aren't able to return to performing a sit-to-stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer in the Foot Bar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day and don't forget, if you can't do it, adapt it. Okay, we are back and we are going to hear from Melissa Arnold. She's going to share the brain flex system that uh, she has developed. And, and note, this is the original brain flex. There's a lot of people that use that term. And so you want to make sure you get to the right party. Now, Melissa Arnold is the author and the creator of the Brain Flex System, which is a series of workbooks that are designed for a variety of cognitive 
levels. And they really focus on that whole person approach to brain health and aging. Melissa, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. So thank you for taking time to be with us. I, I can't wait for people to hear about your brain flex system. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but before I kind of go down my line of questioning, I always like to ask my guests if they've been personally touched by dementia. Well, um, my dad had a vascular dementia that was never diagnosed. Um, he ended up dying a little before his time due to some other um, health complications. Um, as a family, we just really uh, needed more education to really know what was going on. But then looking back, I began to see that um, some of the things he was saying and doing, the more I learned about dementia, the more I understood what was happening. and. And I'm thinking he would have never wanted that, you know. And so my heart was to find ways to be proactive against um, the development or slowing down the progress of dementia. Um, you know, I ran a home care agency, so I, I dealt with a lot. And you get really close to the families and and just to see the the, the families deal with the sadness of their dad doesn't know who they are or their mom forgets their name and it's it's like seeing them die every day and and we were using a program that was very reactive you know teaching people how to deal with with the symptoms what was going on but there was nothing really at the time that was proactive and this is back in 2014 and and I was like there's got to be a way that we can get ahead of this this crazy disease. And so, um, well, I shouldn't say disease, there's all kinds of diseases that cause dementia. Um, but just to get ahead of this type of cognitive decline. And so that, that's really what triggered my, my research. Wow. Like most families, nobody says, Hey, bring it on. <laughs> you know, it just kind of smashes through the door and mm -hmm. um, kind of hits in a real disastrous way. And you had mentioned, you know, not feeling educated. I don't think anybody is educated when this thing pounds on your door. I mean, even if you thought you were, you find out real quickly, you're not, you're not to the level that you need to be. And, and yet it's really hard to find resources. How did you, how did you find resources or where did you, where did you go? I had read a book called, um, the brain that changes itself. Mm -hmm. And I began to really understand brain plasticity and um, you know, you kind of think that, Oh, they're getting older. They're going to forget that you just accept it. And nope. And then by the time you recognize this is more than just age. Mm -hmm. And um, by then, you know, all this time you could have been doing something to keep you from getting to that point. Mm -hmm. And so the brain plasticity piece was the beginning um, and then when I begin to understand that we can grow new neural pathways, that we can um, do things to build cognitive reserve, then I'm, I'm thinking, okay, but what about all these other diseases that cause um, Alzheimer's or other diseases that have dementia connected to them, you know, like diabetes and high blood pressure and cl high cholesterol, all those other things that we can prevent that mm -hmm lead to this um, to this cognitive decline, which is the worst. And so that's when I began to become really a researcher of researchers and a lot of university studies, lectures. Um, and I began to understand that it's really what we eat, um, our exercise, our social connections, along with that constant learning, um, going back, relearning things that you may have forgotten, continuing to keep your, your brain sharp, and then learning new things. So it was the brain training, the nutrition education, the socialization, and the exercise. And there are some other things that we also um, visit in every workbook, like sleep patterns, um, things such as positive, a positive mindset, um, avoiding apathy, those kinds of things. Those also all play a role. But the key cornerstones were the exercise, the brain training, the socialization, and the exercise. And then with exercise, we put stress reduction like meditation and prayer. Yeah, so, and we all need that these days. That's for sure. Yeah. This world's oh. gotten 
pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, bizarre. <laughs> so when was the point for you after you're doing all this research or pulling all this stuff together going, I have to do this for others now, you know, I, I need to pull this together in a cohesive, easy piece that that people can apply. I spent most of 2014 researching mm -hmm. and then I thought we've got to create a program with this, mm -hmm. that something that incorporates the, these concepts. And that's when Brain Flux Wellness Club was born mm -hmm. and it was a brick and mortar and we would meet um, twice a day, five days a week. Um, we would have three hour sessions and our morning sessions were for those that were more wanting to prevent and be proactive. And then our afternoon sessions were for those that were a little bit farther along, but still could slow down um, the progress. And we would incorporate all these things in a three hour program. And it was becoming very popular. And we were thinking, how am I going to scale this business? And um, then COVID happened and we, we had to close our doors. And so I cried a lot because I had put so much time into this. I was working full time and my evenings and weekends I spent researching and, and not to mention the monetary piece too, but I was just more upset that we can't end this. We can't stop helping people. This is making a difference. And so I prayed then for another week and um, felt like I should put the program into workbooks and mm -hmm. that took a good year um, i continued teaching a few of my um, members online which we still do um, while i put the curriculum into workbooks and and now we really have we have a train the trainer type of um, platform where we can train others to teach sessions they the uh, workbooks can be used one-on-one -on -one or um, like for home care agencies, they can be used for ALFs, senior centers, um, any type of community group, small group. One uh, group, there's, I think, 27 in their group, a community that uses it. So it can be small and people can use it individually, too. So mm -hmm. it can be used in a lot of ways. And so now, even though it was horrible at the time, we're able to help, you know, seniors all over the all over the U.S. now, so that's the positive that came out of. So you're that. you're not doing anything outside the U.S. right now? Not yet. Um, the workbooks uh, until I can translate them into or other languages, mm -hmm. you know, then then we'll. They're certainly appropriate. We know dementia is a worldwide issue, mm -hmm. um, so it's just a matter of of getting it get a good solid process and systems in place for the U.S. and then and then moving on to to an okay. international. Now, my understanding, if, if I remember correctly, you have three different volumes for workbooks. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Can you explain um, why the three and the purpose behind the three? Sure. So we have the pre prevention series. Mm -hmm. Now, each series has 12 volumes mm -hmm. and um, typically uh, you would go through one volume a month, mm -hmm. um, two times a week. You can spread it out, do it the way that you want to do it, but they, they're created with, you know, to do two complete lessons a, okay. a week. Um, so the prevention is for those that um, just want to be proactive. Now, all of the activities, mm -hmm. they're very, um, they're dignified. We okay. might um, do, we might chart out a profit and loss sheet mm -hmm. and try to recognize the trend and determine why there's a trend in this business over the 12 month period. Um, so they're very, they're not juvenile at all. And um, there's an opportunity for um, creativity. Um, but we can talk a little bit more about that later. Back to the different series. I don't want to go down the rabbit trails <laughs> so we have prevention then we have the mild um the early to mild series and that's for those that are just um recently diagnosed um or they just might have a little bit of a mild memory impairment um, but they're still able to you know process understand mm -hmm. with little 
verbal or visual cueing. Okay. Um, then we have our um, mid to moderate, and that is for those that are they've had you know dementia for quite some time. They can still follow directions. They just might need some more visual cues or some more mm -hmm. verbal cueing. Um, maybe not able to do the workbook alone, but mm -hmm. could still enjoy and and have uh, and see a lot of the positive outcomes of doing it with someone else or within a group. Um, for at this time, we really don't have anything for those that would I would say be in memory care. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the, something that that we wouldn't be able to put in a workbook. It would be more for the caregiver um, if we ever create something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, and that, I think that's totally understandable. You know, uh, when it when it comes to that, let's dive into um, each of the series a little bit more. You started kind of going in to <laughs> specifics, um, and you know, and it's hard not to when you're excited about what you're doing. Yes. So, so each of the three, the prevention, the the early to mild, and the mild to moderate, all have twelve volumes, and the expectation is to um, work on the programs twice a week for how is it for that three hour period that you mentioned earlier or does that vary it, it will vary um some of the groups might do the exercises on a separate day or later in the day like if it's an adult day program they may mm -hmm. separate it throughout the day um so within each workbook we have um along with with the eight lessons. Mm -hmm. So every lesson has a discussion sheet and that's news you can use, which is really good for caregivers, families, hired caregivers. It doesn't matter. It's, it's important information. It could be on healthy communication or um, uh, healthy sleep patterns. There's all types of different things that we revisit. We may go in to details on some of the, one of the concepts like socialization, and talk about why positive surrounding yourself with positive people is so important. Mm -hmm. um, so we just those discussion sheets are meant to create and give opportunity for discussion, whether it's one on one or or someone's doing it individually and they read it with mm -hmm. to look what I just read to their family member or a group discussion, which there's always great group discussion that comes from those sheets. So that there's one of those in every lesson. And then there's four or five activities. And then we have a ret there's four recipes in each workbook. So one for each week. Now the recipes aren't just um, recipes and ingredients. We go into detail as far as what the ingredients do for your body, the why behind mm -hmm. broccoli, the why behind certain types of oils. And so it's it's an education, not just a recipe. But sometimes, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And you think if you're eating peanut butter, that's fine. And you don't realize the trans fat in the particular peanut butter and that there's other options like almond butter or, you know, all natural peanut butter. And so it's, it's all about education and the recipes are very easy. I don't, I think there's only two that require any type of cooking. And mm -hmm. um, most of them are just because we want fresh mm -hmm. cooking is a process. So we want to, to keep it as clean as possible. And food really is medicine. Um, you know, just like apples full of quercetin, you know, which is a great, um, it really b helps your system, your immune system battle viruses. So there's, that's one of many examples. And, and once you know what's in the food, it's hard to go back to processed. Mm -hmm. food. Well, I um, like that you put in the why behind there, because otherwise it, it, it doesn't give you a reason to really remember or value why you're doing what you're doing. And, um, and making that conscious choice is just another, it's just another, another food selection. But when you add that additional layer of education, it's more than that. So. Right, right. Um, and, you know, I, at the beginning, I always get pushed back, you know, I'm 80 years old, I'm going to eat whatever I want. And so, but once they realize what happens when mm -hmm. they 
eat processed food or how important that healthy gut is to their how they feel mentally mm -hmm. um the neurotransmitters you know they can understand oh that's why i get kind of depressed after two pieces of cake <laughs> you know so it does make you think and um like i said you don't know what you don't know so yeah. so also so that's the nutrition piece and the brain training piece and then we have at the beginning of every workbook are our exercises and there's visuals along with written instruction they really focus on core strengthening for balance mm -hmm. because we want to keep from falling and also range of motion. Um, and even though, you know, you can sit and do those uh, all at once, I always tell my members to keep it beside the table that you always are, the chair you always sit in and mm -hmm. every so often pick it up and do, do a few, mm -hmm. you know, just to keep your body moving. So they're, um, and then we have the, the prayer meditation piece, mm -hmm. which is, purposeful breathing. It's just in and out different types of um, stress relief, stress relieving breathing techniques along with um, gratitude. That's the word I was trying to think of. There's a lot of gratitude and self affirmations incorporated into the meditation time and prayer time. And that's just to control stress. Mm -hmm. We've, that's a big contributor to um, to dementia, mm -hmm. um, sadly, and life is stressful. So we have to find outlets and ways to deal with it. Yeah, I just uh, interviewed a gal, Lori Ellis Young and her husband, George Ellis, and they wrote a book called Breathe the Change. And I've known Lori mm -hmm. for, for years, but it is amazing how breath, uh, how our breath can make such a huge, huge difference in keeping us calm and I know for me, I use um, one of them where it's just breathing in 11 times deep and then exhaling. But on the inhale, I've learned to ask God or your higher power, um, what do I need? Give me whatever I need. Where I used to like say, this is what I need right now, <laughs> you know, because it was stress. And I just yeah. say, please give me what I need because you've got a, a much better view uh, of options out there. And then on the exhale, I ask that all the toxins in my mind, body, and soul leave the building. And after, you know, those 11 breaths, I just feel so much more grounded and focused and calm. It just, it's incredible. And I know that there's all mm. different types of, of breath that you can do, you know, in the meditation, I know a lot of times people think, oh, that's woo wooey. And, but there's lots of different ways to meditate or prayer in different cultures you know, kind of call it what you want. And, and then that gratitude piece, I think is, especially in this day and age, some, sometimes it's really hard to go, what am I grateful for? And, and it's like, well, maybe because you woke up this morning, you know, and, yeah. you got a, and you got another day or you got a phone call or you didn't get a bill in the mail or it doesn't have to be anything huge, but it's recognizing those simple pleasures, you know, that you got a roof over your head and the electricity is still working and you had coffee with a friend or, you know, it just doesn't have to be that big, but it's so, it, it just really does change your mind. I think both in the morning and at night of why you're living life isn't meant to be hard, but when we focus on the negative, it just amplifies everything. Mm -hmm. Dealing with a complicated disease like dementia, it's easy to go down that rabbit hole. And there are many people that will reinforce you for doing that. And again, that's not healthy if, if you're trying to maintain your, your relationships and your goal and your life as a whole. I think those, those pieces are really, really important. So I'm, I'm yeah. really glad that you put those in same when you mentioned um, the exercises and the core muscle. I think a lot of times people think exercise and you know, they're, they're sweating or my, my knees can't handle it. Or my, I mean, we, we have our list of excuses right, right in front of us. And there's so many things that can be done sitting in a chair or, you know, um, adapted in, in different ways. And those core muscles are so critical because and a lot of the public probably doesn't know this, but you know this, I know this, 
on how bad a fall can be. Mm -hmm. And, and that can really spiral someone's health condition um, Mm -hmm. significantly in that. So these are all, I think, great holistic approaches and holistic also in that you have control over this. This isn't being done to you. You know, you can step into this and do this for yourself, gift yourself. Right. Right. It's a choice. Now, do you see with these workbooks, people working together, like sometimes I think people get a workbook and go, okay, this is for my person with dementia. And it's like, well, no, you could really both do this together if you want. Oh yeah. And, and they, it, it really, there's a lot of bonding that happens, Mm -hmm. whether it's a hired caregiver or a family member or in a group. Um, Like I mentioned, some of the creativity, we might say, all right, um, write your, a 22 year old comes to you with advice on Mm -hmm. uh, finding a marriage partner. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them? And then we'll give them a few minutes to write and then they share. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you talk about education, you know, and it's, it, it makes the workbook a great memoir because there's several times in there where we're asking for personal experience, um, you know, write about your favorite song. Where mm-hmm. were you when you heard it? What comes to your mind? So there's that creative, we do poetry in addition to um, just writing, even opinion pieces mm-hmm. um, or critical thinking um topics will say, you know, ask opinions on that. And then they love, and even when their opinions differ, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, well, um, you know, you think about life. I, I mean, you have a lot of different circles of friends and family and how often do you agree? I mean, there's a lot of disagreement rarely. <laughs> that happens, but that doesn't mean you don't enjoy the interaction. You don't enjoy the company. Granted, right. there's a few people you go, okay, I'm staying away from that one because this just isn't good for us. You know, it's not a, it's not a respectful right. exchange, but I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that, that like to have those varied opinions. And it's like, well, challenge me. Why should I change my mind? And, and it's very um, it's, it's a rich discussion. It really mm-hmm. is because usually by the time you're in your seventies or, uh, you know, you think I'm not changing, I've been this way all my life, but it's amazing when you start opening up to other people's thoughts and opinions. I mean, that's the way we were created to be, right? Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to all agree. That would be a really boring uh, world to live in. Well, and I like the the legacy piece of, you know, asking people to, you know, write or share. And I would imagine if they're, you know, because sometimes with dementia, people can't physically write anymore. Some people need to type it on a computer. Some people would be telling a story um, either in audio or video format. I would imagine that that is acceptable, you know, for for the process. Is is that correct in saying that? Well, um, one of there is a there are a lot of um, software programs out mm-hmm. there, and and I've always been very like bent on having a workbook mm-hmm. um, because of that hand brain connection. Okay, and which you can write with a stylus, mm-hmm. right? You know, you so you can write on an iPad. Mm-hmm. It's but it's it's having your 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 hand do what your brain's telling it to do, mm-hmm. which is so important. You know, when you talk about remain, you know keeping your independence. Mm -hmm. So um, in addition to the, the keepsake it provides, but I think like, I still like a library book. I still Mm -hmm. like holding the book in my hand. And I think a lot of our seniors are that way too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you can't do both, you know, but for this particular, um, now I don't know, we might put it uh, in in a form later if people, so people could write with a Mm -hmm. stylist. Right now, um, I like having that turn the page, you know, mm-hmm. and, and hold on to this, this workbook, bring your workbook to class, you mm-hmm. know, so, yeah. Yeah, well, and I, I can, I can see that. I just know that some people struggle depending on where, where they're at. Right. And some people can't, it's not yeah. an option, right? And, and want to know that, you know, if, if that's the case, because it is nice having it all in one spot, Mm -hmm. For sure, you know, on something like that. Now, I don't know if I cut you off about explaining what was in all three of them. I I, (laughs) I can tend to kind of take us on a turn there, too. So (laughs) was there anything that we missed? 
Well, the so the prevention series and the early to mild series, mm -hmm. they both include a personal action plan. Mm -hmm. And so you set two goals for the month for mm -hmm. each of the four concepts. So two goals in your um, brain training, two goals in your exercise, and then in your with exercise and meditation, mm -hmm. and then in your nutrition and um the socialization. So you set two goals for each. And then there are wellness notes for each week, each of the four weeks that try help you track your progress. What are you doing to meet those goals? Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, a lot of the, them, the seniors will set their own, create their own mm -hmm. plan. Um, some will do it with family members, but it is a great tool for doctors. Like they love to look at the action plan and the wellness notes to mm -hmm. actually see what they're doing. Um, to move things along and they're proud to show their mm -hmm. doctors, look what I've done this month. So, and, and it's a way to, if, if you have a hired caregiver also for families to see what you're doing, um, you know, that's a big complaint as I ran a home care agency was TV and the caregivers on our phone and all mm -hmm. they do is what, you know, and so even though you give them things to do, there's no way to really know they're doing those things mm -hmm. where the workbooks, you can actually see what they did that day, see mm -hmm. what they wrote. There's recipes they can make together. Um, so it it's it's got a, a lot of pieces to it that make it good for any any interaction. Um, but let's see, I covered the the wellness and the action plan, the exercise. I think I've covered everything that's in there. Okay. Um, we do we do have a resource page which give mm -hmm. you some great resources. To, for families to utilize, um, so that's that's an extra bonus. Okay, great. Well, and I love you mentioned doctors because I sometimes I don't think they pull all these pieces of it, kind of that whole person approach. It's write a prescription, and so I think this would be a great way to help educate them because they don't always get that in their training. And so I think the general public can really push that forward and, and show, because you're gonna notice changes in symptoms and mood and, and all of those types of things um, by, by utilizing right. the book. Now, is there subtitles for the workbooks as well? So the whole person approach is the, the subtitle the mm -hmm. whole person approach to brain health. Okay. And that is because it does take all of these things, the four concepts we keep talking about, mm -hmm. in addition to the other small things that we mm -hmm. discuss throughout the workbook about sleep, about your attitude. That's why we do self-affirmations. Every, every um, lesson includes a list of self-affirmations. And that's based on research that supports that what you hear out loud, what you say actually affects you physically. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no, um, it, it, it's so hard. You, you think of thoughts and words as just these, but they have a physical, they have a physical piece to them in your mm -hmm. brain and they're like tree branches. Mm -hmm. And so that negative thinking, it, it really will kill brain cells. Um, yep. It releases cortisol. It, so that's why we, and it's hard to just stop thinking negative unless mm -hmm. you replace it with something positive. So that's why we have the, the, a space after each meditation guide to, for them to write what they're thankful for that month. Mm -hmm. And if you can re, in the self affirmations, you can replace those negative thoughts with the positive thoughts. Otherwise, it's, it's hard just to say, stop thinking that. Like I said, I think so often, you know, in the medical industry, we aren't looking at whole person. I mean, we think, we think right. they are you know, when we go in, no. but they're really not, no. you know, they, they and, zone and in on right. this and, and um, yeah. And it's not, especially with dementia, I, I we're not at a place where it can be fixed by a pill. And there's so many different alternatives out there and a lot of, well, just in, in the recent weeks, uh, in the recent months, a lot of the, the mainstay theories about dementia have really come to light of, are these true and accurate theories? Any, you know, families or friends 
purchase the book and kind of do a book club together, you know, because I'm thinking of a lot of families are worried that, hey, this is kind of creeping up. You know, we've had more than our fair share of dementia in the family and doing kind of an educational and even an intergenerational piece would be really interesting to get our younger population involved in something like that. Has Have you seen that or do you offer that or um, am I left field? That won't work. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's a great idea. As we mentioned, you know, some of the discussion sheets, mm -hmm. they're good for every generation. Mm -hmm. So it's a great intergenerational um, activity, you mm -hmm. know, for grandkids to do with grandparents. And, um, you know, my family has the, the ones that have that have worked with the book love mm -hmm. it and and want more. And we've had some families that have gone to community workshops. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the brain flex can be utilized as a workshop for certain, um, you know, community centers and they'll buy the book on their own, another version, and then they'll do it as a small group mm -hmm. once they finish the workshop. So it, it's so uh, flexible the way it can be utilized and it's information that's good for everybody. Yeah, you know, it's not just for people that have dementia. It's the way we all should be living, really. Exactly. It's, it's uh, healthy well, living. I just think of, you know, some of the um, studies out there where it is familial and and people have these genes, how neat it would be to incorporate something like this into a particular study and see if there's a difference. And have you have you thought about doing something like that or have you already done something on that order? Not yet, mm -hmm. not yet. You know, I think we've talked before about the the time and the marketing, mm -hmm. and just rolling things out slowly. But you know, I think that's a very valuable um, piece of information. It's it would be very good for for intergenerational activities for for everybody involved, especially if there's a gene that runs in that family. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you talk about getting ahead of the disease. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, you know, with the kind of Pandora's box and, and, you know, shining a light on how research has been done, this is almost like perfect timing to take a different approach and say, you know, let's see what happens with, with this methodology. And because uh, it's not just one methodology. I mean, you've put multiple things together. Uh, I think it could be really, really interesting. So if anybody's listening who is a researcher, has connections, reach out to <laughs> Melissa <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and see what's what. Um, are there other ways to utilize the workbooks that we haven't talked about so far? Well, we've talked about, so it's, it's for assisted livings. Um, if they did the activity, if they had did one workbook a month, mm -hmm. Um, it would give them 24 hours of activity hours mm -hmm. and it's all done for them. And then we do the training. So that's um, then also one thing I didn't mention is we do have training material that they get to keep. And then we send a work, um, a PowerPoint. There's a mm -hmm. PowerPoint for every lesson. So mm -hmm. if you're teaching as an instructor, you do have a PowerPoint that it keeps everybody on the same page and mm -hmm. um, working together. It's just a, a, an added bonus that's no extra cost. And so there's there's that piece. So assisted livings, independent living, um, 55 and older community would be great for small groups, um, mm -hmm. kind of like a pampered chef party, but a brain flex party. You know, um, you can have a little bit of wine at those parties, um, <laughs> but <laughs> if the doctor says it's okay. And, um, but it's, it's a, cause it's a great social piece. I mean, it mm -hmm. really brings people together and when they start opening up and then, you know, there's some music pieces and that is universal. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, again, independently, um, community, uh, community centers, senior centers, um, YMCAs that might offer silver sneakers. Are, we are in the process of talking to um, the developer or the, the, the gentleman that runs the silver sneakers because that is the exercise piece, but mm -hmm. you really need the whole person. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I think I hit on all of the, it, it, it would be even a great Sunday school class for churches. Yep. 
you know, because I feel like um, the one place where I see the most unhealthy eating, no offense, churches, I love you, mm -hmm. but it's in the churches. It's usually donuts, you know, in the morning or potluck. And so, um, you know, I feel like our bodies created by God and we should treat it like the valuable thing that it is. I mean, we're one of a kind. Nobody else has our DNA. We treat a classic car or the Mona Lisa with such care, but our own bodies that are so unique and special, we just. Not so you know, much. Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> well, you know what I was thinking when you were talking, it would be fun to have a few recipes just to kind of put that, that idea in people's heads about gatherings, you know, um, oh, because, yeah. because not only could they use it for this, but just when they have people over, a lot of times people don't know what to have. And that's a way to educate their friends or their families as well. If that's changing, you know, like what's up with the fruit and the nuts, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Where's my brownies? Yeah, that's <laughs> um, good. We do have some black bean black bean brownies that are really good. Believe uh -huh. it or not, they are oh, made with black I, beans. I might have to get that recipe from you. That sounds good. I'm a <laughs> I'm a brownie girl. So, oh well, that that is wonderful. You know, I think we've we've talked in a lot of ways about how your program is so different from so many that are out there. I mean, there's a lot of different programs, but. Many of them are, you know, here's a piece over here, but then you go buy this piece over there and, and you've really melded everything together. Um, and I love that you're doing the train, the trainer, and there's so many flexible ways in terms of making this easy to apply. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause you know, difficult doesn't usually work or it doesn't last long, you know, right. with that. and this seems like it's, it's not only um, simple to follow, but fun to do like you said, dignified, educational, you've got the legacy piece. I mean, there's just so many different parts to it um, that can engage people in so many different ways. So kudos to you for putting this all together. And, and I guess thanks for COVID for helping you along. You know? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. It, I, we, I did want a very comprehensive program. Mm -hmm. And, and I did have a lot of cheerleaders along the way. Um, there's a Dr. Laird and Orlando and, a um, and Deanna that works with Cindy. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they cheered me along when I was like, I can't do this. You know, mm -hmm. that you're allowed to have like a few minutes of a pity party, you know, and, but then you got to pull yourself up yep. and, and where do we go from here? Um, so yeah, those, again, that social piece mm -hmm. we need so bad. So yeah. We all, we all need support no matter who we are. We want to feel purposeful and involved and accepted Absolutely. and, um, you know, this really hones all of this in. Is there anything that, you know, I, I didn't touch on, um, that you want to share with us or did we, do we really cover it? I mean, it seems so well thought I, out. I think we covered I think we covered about everything. We covered everything in the workbooks, the three different levels, um, what the different types of groups are one on one or individually, mm -hmm. how the workbooks can be used. So, um, yeah. And, you know, the workbooks can be ordered. Um, you can go straight to my website and click on the workbook tab. And there's two options. You can order it from Amazon or um, you can get a discount by ordering it through the BrainFlex store. Um, but let's guess which one people are going to pick <laughs> <laughs> order it from the brain flex store. Sometimes people find Amazon easy because mm -hmm. they already have an account. And matter of fact, Amazon's just way too easy. Mm -hmm. So my son called me earlier with girl issues and I was like, Oh, I have to send him something, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> point and click and there $50 later, he'll have a nut basket. <laughs> <laughs> so Amazon is easy for a lot of people, but, mm -hmm. um, but you can order from the store and it, it is secure and encrypted all the information. So no one has to worry about that. Okay. Now, some people might want to know if you're a profit or a nonprofit. So I feel nonprofit. I have felt that way since COVID hit, but <laughs> we aren't set up nonprofit. No, we are for okay. profit. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes, we are. And there's, I, I am too. You know, I, I think there's enough non for profits out there. We should all work together in, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. So yeah. people can go to your website, which is brainflexwellness.com. Mm -hmm. And let's just talk about that name too, because I know there are others using that term out there in terms of, you know, differentiating who you are. So again, it's brain flex wellness um, that you want to make sure that you're going to. Right. So brain flex wellness, it, we started as a club and, mm -hmm. and, and it is wellness, wellness club. Mm -hmm. um, when we put all the pieces together in the workbooks, um, it became the brain flex system, but brain flex itself, it's uh, the original. We are, we are registered trademark. Um, there are other people that use brain flex that shouldn't be, but they are. I want people out there getting the help that they need, but we are the original. And so brain flex is, yes, it's a registered trademark. Okay. Well, good. And then, um, you also, you know, if they want to go to the workbooks, I mean, they'll see that on the site or you can put in brainflexwellness.com forward slash workbooks. And then you're also on LinkedIn as a BrainFlex uh, Wellness Club. They can find you there. And you've got some videos. Uh, I found a, a video that I thought was really helpful on your about page as well. Um, but I, you'll find lots of great information. Are you comfortable talking about cost? And I know packaging and there might be bundles and all of that stuff in, in terms of how much you can really get into, or is it best to go to the site and then contact you individually on that? Well, the workbooks right now on Amazon, they're they're $29.90 and I can't do a lot with that price. Mm -hmm. um, they are $23 on my store site. But when people order in bulk, like for mm -hmm. a community, um, there are discounts based mm -hmm. on volume. So that seems really reasonable for what you have loaded into these things. It seems very reasonable. Yes, it is. And when you think about, uh, you know, a community or an assisted living, it it's, it's $23 or whatever we decide mm -hmm. with the, mm -hmm. depending on how many they order per person and families are more than happy to pay that. Yep. And it really, it gives them a lot of hours of activities. Um, they just need a person that is a good, you need a good instructor. Yep. You know, that is important. It needs to be somebody that really cares. You just can't pull somebody off the floor and say, Hey, I need you to teach this class. That's yep. Um, the instructor is very important and how she helps people engage with one another, which is what we talk about in the training. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do anything like with online classes where they have a support person um, at a community where you're really leading it and it could even be something that's pre-recorded? We, we've talked about pre-recording. Um, we're not uh, I'm leaning against the live sessions mm -hmm. just because of the time piece. Yep. Um, as we grow, that becomes more and more difficult. But pre-recorded videos with a facilitator that mm -hmm. still goes through the training is absolutely an option. Um, okay. And we've we've talked about that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Well, Melissa, this has been just so much fun. I am so excited and and proud of what you've put together. I think it really oh, thank you. feels a nice niche out there, and you know that we have to be able to educate people in a lot of variety of ways. And thanks for putting in all the hard work, so the rest of us don't have to <laughs> dig so deep because we're caring for somebody. You just it's difficult to find that time. Right. So right. what a what a great, great resource. So again, you can go to brainflexwellness.com for more details. For our listeners, I would say please like, click, and share this. You know, don't keep this a secret. A lot of people this can benefit. Dementia or not, this can be useful really for anybody at any age, like we talked. And because there is that prevention piece in there, it is about understanding the importance of, you know, what you put in your body affects you, the exercise. Um, I think people are surprised at the sleep and, you know, even being hydrated, all of those, there's so many things that come out and, uh, and then to be able to capture some legacy pieces and engagement opportunities and socialization, I think is just um, fantastic. So again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Lori.
Okay. Till next week, we will see you later, everyone. Bye now. Hello, podcast listener. If you're caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia, you'll want to check out All's Authors, the global community of authors writing about Alzheimer's and dementia from personal experience. We have the most comprehensive collection of hundreds of carefully vetted books and blogs covering all types of dementia and caring situations. Our authors' personal stories and painfully learned lessons can help you on your own journey. We also offer a fabulous podcast called Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia, which you can find on any of your podcast platforms. Remember, you are not alone. One can sing a lonely song, but we chose to form a choir and create harmony. Find us at allsauthors.com.